Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time and depending on when you're going to be seeing this video. It's your brother, your boy, Cost Reps Corner. Like I always tell you guys, it's my corner, it's your corner, and it's a corner. I don't wanna fall in love. I just wanna have some fun, yeah. I don't wanna fall in love. So if you look at order 7 through 4, through 5, through 6, Rule 7, Rule 8, Rule 9, Rule 10, Rule 11, and Rule 12. It was very clear that members of the National Assembly, both in the Senate and in the House of Representatives, shall freely elect among themselves or nominate among themselves the majority leader, the deputy majority leader, the whip, the deputy whip, the minority leader, the deputy minority leader, the minority whip. And if you go to order 7 rule uh, 12, it also lays emphasis that even to change this leadership when nominated, that you will require after due notice to the leadership, simple majority among the members to remove them. So what is the, 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 the import of this? The power to elect, the power to select, the power to nominate. Under the uh, 2020 amended standing orders, of the House of Representatives rest squarely with members of the different caucuses of the parliament, whether majority or minority. And it's on that note that I want to inform you that the nomination, selection, and election of the leadership of the current House of Representatives and that of the Senate was done by members of the National Assembly in accordance with the standing orders of both chambers. And also, it's important to understand that politically also, consultation was extensively carried out. And if you remember, both from the PDP end, for the, from the NMPP end, the Labour Party end, and up to the APC end. I remember the leadership visited Kefi to meet with the national chairman of uh, APC in furtherance of that consultation to be able to have carry everybody uh, on board. And also in compliance with Order 4, Route uh, uh, 14, those people were elected because they have the cognitive legislative experience as required by those standing orders. So that is why it was very, uh, 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 it was very, uh, how will I put it? It was unwelcomed and unacceptable to hear the party chairman, Abdullah Hadabun, try to disrespect the statutory decision of the National Assembly. It was, it was, very, it was unhealthy, it was unacceptable, and it's important that you understand that Prior to the election of both principal officers, both at the Senate and the House of Representatives, political parties, are, the members of the parliament across all political parties met with the president and agreed on a, work, a harmonious working relationship that would not jeopardize the independence of the parliament. Well, we agreed that the, independent of the independence of the National Assembly will be respected by the president and lawmakers are going to work with the president on delivering people interest legislation and executive agendas. And what the chairman of the APC now did is an attempt to sabotage that harmonious working relationship that is aimed at delivering on parliamentary goals. And that was unacceptable. It, it was aimed at sabotaging them and, and creating internal you know, rumbles or internal disharmony or, 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 or disunity that will end up not allowing us to have a smooth takeover of parliamentary business. The leadership of the House of Rep and the Senate has since you know, started their business. And electing these principal officers is to complement the leaders who are elected at the both chambers, especially in the House of Rep, where we are unanimously elected Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Carlo, who have been leading us excellently well since after their election. So I, w I wish and I pray that the leadership of the ruling party will call their national chairman uh, to order, because if this kind of comment is allowed to come, it may sabotage what is already on the ground, which is aimed at delivering on the uh, on people interest uh, legislation. And it's also important to understand that the principal officers that we are selected, we are voluntarily selected by majority, if not 100% of we lawmakers. So there's even no dispute. There's even no complaint anywhere. So are you going to complain about Julius uh, Ivombere, somebody that you know has so much legislative experience that is like the brain boss of both the Ninth Assembly and the Tenth Assembly? very excellent, very professional, somebody that has made so much input in ensuring that we have standing orders that are in tune with international best practices and standard. And the role he played in, in the period to the election, stepping down for uh, Benjamin Carlo. Are you going to talk about uh, uh, Kinsley Chinda? 
the majority of we in the opposition also selected that have so much legislative experience in terms of uh, minority issues and his contribution to the election of the present leadership we have today. So for, are you going to talk about uh, Kumu, somebody that was at the forefront of the joint tax effort to have this present leadership? Same with Ononoga, with Afa, and so on and so forth. All the principal officers, they were selected. But you need to understand that the 10th National Assembly is a joint tax force, it's a joint effort, because we strongly believe that joint tax is needed in nation building that can be sustainable. And we don't want anybody, what we're saying is we don't want anybody to interfere in the business of lawmaking. This decision was taken by members of the parliament, and I can authoritatively tell you that lawmakers of the 10th National Assembly have absolute confidence, if not 120% confidence, in the present leadership that we have today especially the principal officer that was selected. So there is no dispute, there is no complaint. We are all working together towards a greater goal, which is to deliver on people's interest-driven legislation. And that is why I condemn the statement from the national chairman, Adlai Adamu, and I want to advise him, don't allow the, the how is it, political chameleon business of a particular governor from the southeast who always likes to sabotage any effort and are delivering democratic dividends or electoral dividends. What uh, Abdullah Hadamu said is the handwork of a particular Southeast governor that all of you know in the APC. He deliberately wants to undermine this peace and serenity that we want, that we have today, that, have, that is going to help in driving parliamentary business. So the statement is condemned, is unacceptable, and we advise that such comments should not be made again. And in conclusion, and let me also say it categorically. The present principal officers we have today cannot be changed unless in accordance with Order 4, Rule 13, that said only members can, with majority of them, if they so decide, remove them. Apart from that, having been elected and sworn into office, they're already working. They're already leading the business of the parliament. So nobody can change them. Only lawmakers can change them. And they can only be changed in accordance with uh, Order 4, Rule 13. Anything outside that, there is nobody that can change it. So people should think that maybe if you cause some, you know, some little shake, shaky here and there, then we'll go and revisit. No, it cannot be revisited unless members on their own decide to say we don't have confidence. But right now we have confidence in them and they cannot be changed. And the business of parliament is already ongoing. And we strongly believe that we're going to deliver on people interest-driven legislation in the coming days. Thank you.